Hi, welcome everybody, it's me, Dr. Karl Itzadek, and you're watching my channel. Today's video is not about the removal of cysts or lipomas, as my channel is dedicated towards. In fact, today I've decided to use my channel to help people understand a little bit more about what's going on in terms of the coronavirus, otherwise known as COVID-19. I hope to use my platform to share information in an understandable fashion so that people, wherever you are, can turn to it and learn from it in a very easy, fashionable style. Obviously, my medical information is based on the guidance that we receive here in the United Kingdom as issued by the government through Public Health England. So if you are based in the United Kingdom, then this information will be relevant to you. If you're outside the United Kingdom, you may find this information useful. In some countries, such as Italy or China, your countries may have more severe or drastic guidelines. So please refer to your local physicians and health departments for further information. I'm gonna start off by discussing the importance of social distancing. Now, the important thing to remember about coronavirus or COVID-19 is not to panic. I wanna start this video by discussing the importance of social distancing, otherwise known as staying away from people who may infect you. In particular, there are certain groups of the population that are increased risk of developing morbidity or mortality. That is to say, if you contract this disease, you may require serious high-level medical intervention or even may result in death. These particular individuals are classified as being the over 70s or those with a chronic serious underlying medical condition. What do we mean by serious underlying medical condition? The reason we are targeting the most vulnerable group is because the mortality in this particular group of people is so much higher than those who are younger or with no medical history. Public Health England advises that the following medical conditions should be observed if we go through them. So, number one, chronic long-term respiratory diseases. What do they mean by that is diseases that affect the lungs. So things like asthma in the elderly or younger individuals who require inhalers such as salbutamol or long-term acting like salmitrol or steroids, whether they use more uh, invasive medication like Montelukast, leukotriene uh, receptor antagonists, or maybe they require steroids, and especially those who require steroids on frequent parts of the year. <clears throat> Chronic obstructive disorders and emphysema and bronchitis. So those individuals who have diseases with the lung in terms of it making it weaker, more susceptible to disease, more difficult to uh, cough out all the excretions which may harbor um, bacteria and therefore depress your immune system and produce sepsis. So the first group which we must consider are those with severe respiratory disorders. And as we mentioned, those are asthmatics, those of what is known as COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, typically long-term smokers, those who suffer from emphysema, whether that be from smoking or occupation, and those who suffer from bronchitis, that's recurrent chest infections. Okay, so what's the second group? Chronic heart disease, such as heart failure. So. Heart failure, as we know, is a condition where the heart no longer has the capacity to pump the blood around the body in a sufficient manner. It tends to stagnate both in the heart, causing it to enlarge and pool in the vasculature of the body. So the blood just sits in your blood vessels and can cause edema. So if you suffer from heart disease, such as myocardial infarction, heart failure, congestive heart failure, rheumatic heart failure, congenital heart, disease, then you would fall into the high-risk group. What's next? So, chronic kidney disease, CKD. So if you've got uh, an issue with your kidneys, that's to say that you are unable to filtrate the blood efficiently. Often your physician will talk about your estimated glomerular filtration rate, your EGFR. Now in the CKD group, we do categorize it into five subtypes from CKD1 to CKD5, and the more severe your disease, the higher that grade. Typically, chronic kidney disease 
really starts off at CKD3. That's to say that your GFR has dropped to a sufficient level that we require medication to preserve its function. And that may include controlling your blood pressure, controlling your diabetes, <clears throat> or in more severe cases, you may need dialysis. The fourth group, chronic liver disease such as hepatitis. So if you've got an issue with your liver, and that may be through no fault of your own, such as a viral infection, whether it be hepatitis B, A, or C, that may cause long-term irreversible damage to the liver, known as cirrhosis. But there are also other causes, not just viruses. We know that chronic alcohol abuse can also lead to chronic liver disease, as well as other pathologies which can affect the function of the, kid, of the liver. So if you're falling into the category of liver disease, that's to say that your liver function tests are abnormal, then you must speak to your physician about how you can remain safe in the midst of the coronavirus. Let's look at the next group that's vulnerable. Chronic neurological disorders such as Parkinson's disease, motor neuron disease, and multiple sclerosis and a learning disability or cerebral palsy. So those are rather large neurological disorders that affect uh, the entire um, nervous system of these individuals. So if you do fall in that group, and that can include elderly, for we have Parkinson's, but it can also include the very young, born with cerebral palsy, then you may also need to be very, very vigilant around this corona outbreak. Okay. The next group that the Public Health England talk about are diabetics. And we already know that diabetics are prone to infection and are associated with multiple comorbidities such as heart disease, high cholesterol and blood pressure. So if you're diabetic, you'll fall into the increased uh, risk group and you must be extra careful and vigilant when social distancing. Anyone with a weakened immune system as a result of conditions such as HIV, AIDS, or on medications such as steroids or chemotherapy. A lot of uh, diseases require medication to suppress your immune system, as well as cancers <clears throat> and other autoimmune disorders. So if you are taking any immunosuppressants, daily prednisolone or steroid of any nature, then you would fall into the increased risk group as well. <clears throat> The final two categories refer to those who are uh, obese, so if you have a BMI over 40, you're also at increased risk, and those who are pregnant. The final subsector is those who are exceptionally vulnerable to corona, and those who have received organ transplants, people with cancer undergoing active chemotherapy or radiotherapy, people who have bone marrow transplants, and people with severe chest conditions such as cystic fibrosis. So if you fall into any of those groups or within the NHS you receive a text message inviting you to an annual flu injection, then you'll be in an increased group for contracting coronavirus and you must be extra vigilant when going outside mixing with uh, individuals. Remember, social distancing is very important, not just for you, but everybody as a whole. Coronavirus is a serious pandemic and the rate at which we are contracting it is exponential and the death rates associated with it are also rising rapidly. So remember to social distance, that means no unnecessary travel. Don't attend large gatherings. In the United Kingdom, we have stopped pubs, cafes, concerts, cinemas and gigs. We've also reduced unnecessary travel on public transport and have tried to reduce private sector workers to working from home where possible. So I hope you found this particular video useful on the vulnerable list of individuals who fall within the social distancing um, categories as stated by Public Health England up to date up until March the 28th. If you have any questions about anything I've said in this video, please do contact your local physician to discuss it further. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that video. We'll go on and produce another more. Take care. Bye-bye.